Oh. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am thrilled that you've joined me today. And I have two very special guests on with me today, Barb and Rich Heckey. And some of you may have heard their names. They are also the founders of Grandparents of Homeschoolers. And so today we are going to talk about all things having to do with our own parents and grandparents and grandparents of your kids. So Barb and Rich, welcome to the podcast. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Yeah, I am yeah. delighted to have you on. And we actually had you both as part of the um, Homegrown Generation Family Expo. And um, it was just such an amazing event. <laughs> and so I'm glad to have you back on talking yeah. about being grandparents of homeschoolers. And there's so much to talk about with this topic. Oh, you yeah. know, um, I was actually talking to my mom, and I'll have you introduce yourselves in just a minute. Mm -hmm. But I, I wanted to say I was talking to my mom last night. And I was telling her how much I appreciated the fact that when we started homeschooling, we never got any kind of resistance from her. My mm -hmm. mom cool. in the beginning, and, and actually I was talking to her, but I was talking about all of our parents, my mom and my dad and my husband's mom and dad. Uh -huh. And when we first went down this road, we had said we'd never homeschool. And then all of a sudden <laughs> we go to this homeschool convention and we came back and we were so excited and we were like, we're going to homeschool and we're going to do this forever. I mean, we were just so excited about it and none of our parents really understood it, but none of them gave us resistance about it. They mm. just kind of said, okay, if this is what you guys think is best. And I think part of that is we had been married quite a long time by that point, I, I guess. I mean, by the time Brooklyn, my oldest was going into kindergarten, we'd been married for 15 years. And so we were well established in our adult life and you know, mm -hmm. we were in our mid thirties and, and mm -hmm. so I think they trusted us. We had proven that, mm -hmm. okay, we could make logical and wise decisions for our family and we had taken really good care of their grandchild so far. So yeah. they trusted us to do that. But I know that that's mm -hmm. not the case with mm -hmm. all parents. I'm grateful for mm -hmm. our parents and their support, even though they didn't totally get it. Mm -hmm. um, but you guys have an amazing ministry, not just to grandparents, though, though your ministry is to grandparents, but it's also to parents yes. who have mm -hmm. parents much so. who are mm -hmm. trying to figure out what this homeschool thing is. Right. So um, tell us a little bit about your family and how you got started in this ministry. Well, um, we uh, uh, had, uh, we have <laughs> four adult children. Uh, they're all, we homeschooled them all the way through and uh, they're all walking with the Lord. And that's uh, one thing we're so grateful for. Uh, and we have been blessed so far with three grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And on, uh, the only uh, bad part about that is they don't live right mm -hmm. near us. They live oh. over a thousand miles away. So oh. one of the components of uh, Grandparents of Homeschoolers is we talk about how we um, uh, communicate, stay in touch with our grandchildren when they are a distance away from us. So we can mm -hmm. still stay engaged in their lives. Uh, but we can talk about that more later. But yeah. um, anything else you want to know? Lots of, lots of long distance grandparenting out yeah. there. Um, the ministry actually got started when um, we were um, leaders in our state organization and we went to a different state's convention mm -hmm. to just get ideas. And they were having a grandparent tea. And we weren't grandparents then, but we asked if we could go just, just to observe. And we saw the grandparents just connecting with, with mm -hmm. each other. And the ones who came and just weren't really sure about this homeschooling thing were sold by the grandparents who were so excited yeah. and they wow. were involved in different ways. And, and we just saw that. And oh my goodness, that was the seed of this ministry. Yeah. And, and the convention thing that you talked about, um, how excited you were. We encourage grandparents to go to conventions, whether they're online, like the one you just had, or whether they're on site, just go to all of them. And um, because that's where they capture the vision and they get ideas and they get excited about what they can do. Right, right. Because then yeah. they feel like they can be part of yes. this whole homeschooling experience for their grandkids, right. which I think is exciting because when you think about kids who go to traditional school, how often, you know, if parents are, uh, if grandparents are local, how often do grandparents go to the, you know, kids school play and their yeah. sports activities and, you know, all the things that grandparents, you know, their award ceremonies, things like mm -hmm. that. I, mm -hmm. And um, I know my parents and my husband's parents have really worked to do that with my nieces who are in traditional school. 
Mm-hmm. And, um, and so it's, it's great to be able to help them figure out how they can have, how they can play a role of encouragement mm-hmm. without playing the role of leadership in right. the education right. of their grandkids, because obviously yeah. there's a big difference. You know, you've got every so often, you know, we hear of those grandparents who really want to be controlling and tell their kids, oh, this I is know. how you should raise your I kids know. and this is what you should do. Instead yeah. of just trusting that, you know what, you did a good job raising your kids and mm-hmm. trust that they are yeah. doing the best job for their family as well. Right. Yeah. So um, we, we, we've talked a lot in the movie about how education is discipleship. Mm-hmm. And I am so blessed to hear that your four adult children are walking with the Lord because that's not Has always to. the case. I know. And certainly there are parents who love Jesus and they've led mm-hmm. their children to Jesus and their children have chosen to walk away. But, yeah. but I'm encouraged that's to know that your kids are all <laughs> yeah. walking um, the, the straight yeah. and narrow path. Um, talk about as you were growing, uh, as your children were growing up, as you were raising your kids, because you homeschooled uh-huh. all yes. four of your kids. Yes. All the way through, correct? From kindergarten through 12th grade? Yes, we yeah. did. So as you did that, and you guys were kind of back in maybe not so much the, mm-hmm. the early pioneer days of homeschooling, but maybe kind of at the, right. the tail end of that, but back in the day yeah. where maybe it, it wasn't as widely accepted as it is now. Yeah. Why did you, right. did you homeschool because you were running from something because of discipleship? <laughs> what was your reason behind it? Oh, well, we, um, see if I can uh, synthesize this. We, <laughs> because of where our oldest son fell in his age, where his birthday was, we had the opportunity basically to decide to put him in school or wait a year. And uh, where we lived, the suburb we lived in at the time, they had just opened a brand new preschool. And um, they got a bunch of new teachers in there because the teachers were all excited to be in this new facility and everybody was really excited about it. And then they had an open house. So people that uh, didn't have children in school could, you know, check it out. And, and so we went to this and we both left the school and we had absolutely no peace. I was crying. About it actually sending wasn't... our oldest or, our, you know, our old son who is mm-hmm. now school age to the school. Yeah. But because of where his birthday fell, we had a whole year to basically make a decision. Panic. <laughs> and so we, we, we used that time to research. And my, yeah. my wife, uh, mm-hmm. they'll probably come to know, is a, uh, uh, just researches everything. Mm-hmm. So um, we, she was discussing, um, lamenting about the situation with a friend of hers. And her, we, we thought of sending them to the Christian school, but it was really not uh, possible for us to afford to do that. Mm. And uh, so she was lamenting to her friend, well, what, you know, we don't know what we're going to do. And, and uh, her friend said, well, why don't you homeschool? And Barb says, homeschool, what's that? <laughs> and so she explained what it was and we started, you know, learning about that. And um, at first I was a little reluctant. I said, well, all right, maybe we could try this, but you know, we'll give it like, I don't know, six months or a, may, maybe at the most a year, but let's just, let's see how we do for six months. And, and I'll tell you within probably a few weeks after starting to homeschool, uh, we were fully convinced this was the way to go. Mm-hmm. And then it got to the point where it's like, wow, even if we had the option of sending our children to the Christian school, um, we would choose homeschooling even over that. Right. Mm-hmm. If we got a free ride for all 12 years, we'd yeah. turn it down. There's yeah. just no way. Me so, too. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so God really yeah. did a work in us. And, and uh, once, we, once we really understood what homeschooling was about and actually started getting involved in doing it ourselves, we were convinced this was the way that God wanted us to raise our children. But what's neat now that we see at conferences is we see these young married couples coming to homeschooling conferences and and registering for online conferences, and they don't have any kids yet. They're already researching homeschooling. We waited until our son turned five and (laughs) panicked. Yeah, we waited until our back was against the wall, basically. I love it, just seeing the vision that they have, and they are bringing the grandparents along, and the grandparents are getting excited about it, and they're looking at all this curriculum and getting ideas, and it's just, it's really neat. Yeah, Yeah. it's been a blessing. It's such an exciting thing, because even with parenting, you know, I started 
reading parenting books and I started, you know, talking to people about parenting and thinking through, okay, when we have children, how are we going to do this, 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 and this? Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, I was one of those moms who thought, well, when we have kids, our kids will never throw tantrums in the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I was the perfect parent, but it's, it's the same with homeschooling in that if you know that that's the direction that you want your family to go, you can mm -hmm. certainly start preparing for it. We, I love hearing from moms who I, and I have a couple of friends who listen to the podcast who don't have kids yet. And they listen to, to this podcast, which is primarily about homeschooling. And yeah. it's such a blessing to me because it's so much mm -hmm. fun to think, mm -hmm. I love that they're preparing their hearts mm -hmm. in order yeah. to prepare the hearts of their children yes. um, for a life that yes. is honoring to the Lord. So let's take mm -hmm. a very quick break. We'll come right back and I want to talk more about discipleship. Okay. okay. We are back with Rich and Barb Hecke, and we were talking before the break about discipleship and about the importance of parents discipling their mm -hmm. children. But I want to talk about grandparents because this is your ministry. Mm -hmm. And I know you talk about how in Psalm 78, the Bible actually exhorts parents, uh, I'm yeah. sorry, grandparents to disciple the hearts of their children and grandchildren. Yeah. So right. talk about that about how that would work. How, how can grandparents come alongside their grandchildren and help disciple them? Uh, well, since you brought that first up, would it be all right if I read that? Sure. I, okay. Um, I, sorry, I don't have this memorized. I wasn't okay. homeschooled. <laughs> if I was, I probably haven't memorized. But, That's something <clears throat> to do with the grandkids. Yeah, but it is something. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. So Psalm 78, 1 through 8, uh, it reminds us this. My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things, things from of old, things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children so the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born. Mm. And they, in turn, would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. They would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to him. Wow. So it's kind of a worldview change or a change in mindset to try and get grandparents who may be solid Christians, but they have always viewed, um, you know, school or home, they, they view homeschooling now as education mm -hmm. and parents view it as discipleship because that's what it is. So that's the vision we're trying to get grandparents to grasp is it's not a separate thing. They disciple the grandkids through everything they're doing with them. Every moment is 24 seven. It's not nine to three on weekdays yeah. and, um, and to be proactive as, as they're doing things, whether they're teaching a skill to their grandkids or whether they're going for a walk in the park to just be always thinking in terms of look at what God made and, you know, it, just bringing, bringing discipleship into everything they do with them. Um, because the one thing about education is it consumes a child's life for, you know, basically from birth or at least preschool all the way through college sometimes, high school right. and college. And so if grandparents aren't involved in the education of their grandkids, they are missing so many discipleship opportunities mm -hmm. because it's, it's just all their time. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I love that passage. Um, and, and just yeah. what it teaches to grandparents and, and exhorts them to mm -hmm. take that role seriously because mm -hmm. it's, 
you know, mm-hmm. they're leaving a legacy for their kids and for their grandchildren and for their mm-hmm. grandchildren's grandchildren right. and for generations to come. Yeah. And Garrett and I were talking about this actually the other day about what kind of legacy do we want to leave for mm, our kids yeah. and for our grandkids. And I think uh-huh. that as parents, we need to be intentional about that yeah, because so. if we don't have a goal in mind, if we have no idea what direction we're heading, then we're going to lose our way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we yeah. have to know what our goal is and we have to know what direction we're going with mm-hmm. our kids because we hope that they're going to take that same direction with mm-hmm. their kids mm-hmm. or our family um, has been studying the book of Revelation. And ah, oh man, you, you talk about a great. tough book. And yeah. um, it's, it's such an, just a powerful book and mm-hmm. Garrett mm-hmm. is doing such a great job of leading us through it. And he's the first mm-hmm. to say how intimidating it is to try to uh. teach through a book that is so hard to grasp. Yeah. yeah. But as we're uh. thinking through that book, as we're studying it, and as we're looking at the culture around us and we're looking at all of the things that are happening, mm-hmm. you know, we're sitting back kind of going, well, you know, the end times, they might be here and they may, you mm-hmm. know, the tribulation may come in our lifetime. I don't know, may come in our girl's lifetime. We don't know. But our mm-hmm. job is to teach our kids truth and to teach them to stand firm and put on the full armor of God. Very good. Yep. Because right. if we don't teach it to them, then yeah. they're not going to be very effective in teaching it to their kids. Now they could right. be, of course, um, yeah. but it's our job to do that with them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so, so I love that you're so intentional about mm-hmm. just leaving that legacy for your kids. So um, I know one of the things that you talk about is how grandparents can make or break homeschooling. Oh, yeah. I have interviewed, yeah. um, well, s- s- many times actually on the podcast, and she's been part of a lot of things we've done is um, Karen Debuse. And mm-hmm. she talks about how when she very first started homeschooling, her parents were adamant um, about right her not doing it. I mean, just like almost to the point of disowning her. Oh, yeah. And well, they, of yeah. course, now, I mean, the, the Lord has done a great work in their hearts, mm-hmm. but it's great. it can undo someone. I mean, oh, just yeah. for yeah. you just think, you know, Graham, if, uh-huh. if my yeah. parents, I, I want to still, as an adult, you know, I'm 45 years old and I still want mm-hmm. to please my parents. Mm-hmm. And right. sure. if I made a decision about my family that my parents were just adamantly against, it would be really hard. Yeah. So yeah. can you talk to, I, I would love for you to talk to two the two separate parts yeah. of parties in this situation. Yeah. And there's, there's to, actually three. <laughs> but the, okay. So then, so then talk okay. to the three parties yeah. in this situation and how to deal with that. Okay. So we, we've kind of uh, talked a little bit about the first one, which is having the grandparents on board. They hear about it and they go, Oh yeah, that's great. Now maybe they've already, maybe they homeschooled, you know, you. And so they're automatically going to be pro homeschooling. They'll be mm-hmm. on board and they'll probably do whatever you ask them to do. And then some, you know, just to spend time with the grandkids. So that's the easy sell because they're already there. Mm-hmm. But then you're going to find that there's some that are supportive, but um, they're kind of a hands off approach. They don't, you know, they, they, they say, well, you know, we, you know, we raised you, uh, you know, whatever you want to do is fine. Um, and they're okay with it. Um, but they're also not really engaged. Mm -hmm. So, um, then there's uh, those that are, um, and I guess with that, the problem with that is there's so many opportunities where they could do something with the grandkids and there's going to be missed opportunities if they don't get involved. And what Mm -hmm. we want to see is that middle group where it's like, yeah, what you do whatever you want to do. That's great, but we want to see the grandparents ramp it up and actually get involved so that they can have some of the enjoyment that we've had discipling our kids, that they can share in that too, because they have so much to offer, probably way more Mm -hmm. than they they realize, because they have all this life of experience that they can bring to the table. And then there's, of course, the third group is the oppositional one. And those are the ones we have to work on because, you know, a lot of times it's like, well, you know, they may have had a really good experience in their particular growing up and their, their history with uh, public school or whatever. Um, And they think, well, it was good enough for me. So why isn't it good enough for my grandchildren? You know, you know, and then if they know nothing about homeschooling, it's like, what are you doing with my grandchildren? Because they know nothing about it. And maybe they've heard some negative stories about it or whatever. And so there, we're not only, you know, we we got a bigger uh, 
education process just to them, you know, mm-hmm. to, to, to try to explain why are we doing this? Why is this really the best uh, road for teaching our children? Mm-hmm. What this is going to be the very best education they can have. When, one of the things on the, on the pro side is we have talked to lots of grandparents who actually have moved to the city that their grandkids are in so they can help homeschool them. And we've talked to families who have moved to the city the grandparents are in so the grandparents can be involved. And so that that deepening of the relationship and the discipleship opportunities are just wonderful. And it takes the stress off of parents. You're not doing it 100% yourself. You've got help and you've got support. You've got encouragement. Mm -hmm. You've got prayer, and it's just, it's, it's a really neat thing. Um, on the other side, one, um, we had some friends for the oppositional grandparents. Um, mm-hmm. We always also tell, tell um, grandparents and parents that, you know, we, as grandparents, had a chance to raise our kids the way that we felt God was leading yeah. us to raise them. Now it's our kids' turn. It's not our decision. We're, right. you know, they're, they're the directors and we're the supporters. And grandparents, you know, need to remember that. And then parents need to remember to ask them for, you know, the, some of the wisdom that they have from all those years of experience. But um, we had some friends at a church that we went to that they watched us homeschooling our kids and they came to, up to us once and said, we really want to homeschool our kids. We like what, what we see among the homeschoolers we know and um, we want to homeschool our kids, but our, um, our, our parents are really against it. And as it turned out, um, one of the parents um, offered them a free ride through Christian school for all I think they had four kids, all four of their kids for 12 years, wow. if they would promise not to homeschool. Wow. And they buckled to, they didn't want to have trouble with the grandparents yeah. and wanted to keep the relationship good. Yeah. So they took them up on that offer. And I was just so sad because God had given them this vision and this excitement yeah. to homeschool. And then the parents just shot it down. So the grandparents are really key in in um how a family operates because it can be wonderful and joyful or it can be totally miserable and sometimes relationships just completely broken off as well sure Mm -hmm. sure and and i'm certain that those grandparents meant well they wanted what was best for their grandchildren yes. yes yeah and that's the key to remember too in in the relationship aspect is that they're really on the same side because they both want the best for mm-hmm. the kids, um, but they just have different ideas of what is best. So it's a matter of you know <laughs> bringing them together. Yeah, that is that is a a difficult thing. Um, I was just going to add to that. Out. We tr- we try to impress on uh, the parents as well as the grandchildren that our parents did the very best they could with the tools they had at the time. And back in the day, uh, homeschooling wasn't even on the radar. Modern homeschooling wasn't even on the radar at that time. So uh, the thought probably never even occurred to them that that could be done. But, you know, back in the founding of this country, all the founding fathers were homeschooled. And um, I think all the presidents, I believe, on Mount Rushmore were homeschooled. So, you know, there, there's a rich heritage in homeschooling. And, um, but now that we have these tools, uh, and, and in many ways it's getting uh, more and more easy to homeschool because of uh, the internet and through all the resources that are now available, it's making the uh, job of the parents that much more organized and easier to do for mm-hmm. homeschooling. So, um, you know, it's a, it's, a little bit easier now in some ways to convince the parents that, but it's still, there still is opposition out there and we still have to do a lot of education on that. There's yeah. two things that I think are key too in, in dealing with that. And, and one is um, what is the missing element in all of this, especially for Christian grandparents, the missing element is Jesus Christ, because what educational you know, situation is going to glorify Christ, teach the kids to love and honor 
Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It's not going to be, you know, a public school. It's not going to happen there. And right. so to, to be looking at that. Um, the other thing is the most effective way to get really oppositional grandparents to kind of come on board in homeschooling is to get them involved mm -hmm. because it's hard to oppose something that you are involved in. Right. <laughs> so if you can have them teach a skill, they know that's pretty easy. And, you know, maybe mom and dad don't want to ask them, um, grandparents to do that. Maybe the grandkids can say, grandma and grandpa, will you teach me XXX? And then after that is done, then mom and dad put it in under their, the, proper academic category in their records and stuff and and to say you know thanks grandma and grandpa for helping mm. teach science you know we, yeah. we've, we put that in our official records you've you've helped teach them science today and so anyway that that's a big help yeah i think that's so. fantastic mm. i think one of the greatest things that any grandparent whether grandmother or grandfather can do if they're local mm -hmm. is to just offer your presence especially if you have a child, uh, 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 you know, if your child has multiple children that they're trying to homeschool, or if they're only trying to homeschool one and maybe they've got a baby underfoot or right. a toddler or something like that, yeah. just having grandma come over, or grandpa come over, maybe once a week or twice a week or something, just for a few mm -hmm. hours and hold the baby, feed the baby, fold yeah. laundry, help with some dishes, just mm -hmm. help in some way. Yeah. I, I think that most grandparents don't understand mm -hmm. the desperate need that most moms feel yeah. mm -hmm. for, for that support and just True. for someone else to come alongside them and just say, okay, how can I help you? What can I do? Yeah. Can I just silently fold laundry? Can I just play with the baby for yeah. a little bit? Um, just to give mom a little bit of a break and, and to give her the opportunity uh -huh. yeah. to maybe catch up on lesson plans if she wants to right. do that or to just right. sit and read with her child or to take her mm -hmm. older one to the park mm -hmm. or to get ice cream or something like that just right. so that mom can be more effective in her sure. role as mom and as homeschool mom and yeah. all the things that she has lined up. And, um, you know, I, I've often thought that I, I wish that, and, and I shouldn't even just say grandparents and mm -hmm. that. I wish that there were more retired, if you will, mm -hmm. homeschool moms um, mm -hmm. who would who would seek out younger homeschool moms in their churches, sure. in their communities, in their neighborhoods, right. and mm -hmm. just say, "Hey, can I just can I come over and just help you? What can I do? How can I be a blessing yeah. to you?" And yeah. most moms yeah. would eat that up. You know, you've got the oh, introverted yeah. mom who maybe <laughs> yeah. wouldn't want that so much, but I think that's yeah. probably right. not not the norm. Um, so what, yeah. what are some ways you had mentioned earlier about how grandparents can be involved in, in, um, from a distance. So if grandma and grandpa, mm -hmm. like you guys, you live right. a thousand miles from your mm -hmm. grandchildren, how can you be involved? How do you find yourselves being able to do that? Um, a lot of stuff over Skype, you, oh, yeah. you can do okay. things. I mean, not Skype, but you know, just, um, sure. online chats, video chats. Yeah. Um, but, uh, we've written books or short stories together. We've done books too, like picture books, but, mm. um, you know, we'll just start out and, uh, you know, our, our granddaughter will maybe write a sentence or two and then we'll write a sentence or two and we Fine. just keep writing the story together or you encourage them in writing the story. You ask questions, what happened next? And if they're too young to write, you, you take down what they say and type down what they say. Oh, if they're a teenager, yeah. you know, they can, they can go on and type on their own, but just, just help them with, with a story um, writing that um, you, a lot of um, things that they can do oh, online is um, you can do, um, I mean, just about anything really. We've, we've looked up pictures on the internet and studied animals, different things like that. Um, the Fibonacci numbers are really fun um, because anything that you can do sitting beside each other yeah. on a couch, you can also do in a video chat. Sure. You can have a copy of the same book that they have and mm -hmm. you can read it back and forth to each other. And for older kids and teenagers too, that, that is really neat. Reading aloud and, and going through a book. Yeah. And, um, Possibly they're learning some Bible verses either through Awana or just yep. through their folks. But 
grandparents would be a, it'd be a great way for the the children to be learning their verses if they could recite it to grandma and grandpa. Yeah, and then uh, yeah. they could coach them and help them out with that. And yeah, yeah that's so about fun. half of grandparents live long distance from their grandchildren, mm -hmm. so you've you've got half of them doing long distance things. But the other statistic we ran into is that ninety percent of um, grandchildren um, say that their um, grandparents had a tremendous influence on their values and their behavior. Hmm. So what is that? That's discipleship yeah. because their values come from being discipled and the behavior is played out from their values. So grandparents who live long distance should be really encouraged because they have a huge influence and they need to just take the, as many opportunities as they can to do things um, by distance with the grandkids. And then when they go there, you know, you can do so many more things and, and can continue that. Um, we, we always bring like art projects or science projects in our suitcase and stuff. And, and now our, our granddaughter asks us every time we come, Grandma and Grandpa, do you have something for us in your suitcase? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah. so it gets that to be, it's, so a, it's a neat tradition and a neat memory too. Yeah, that is so, so. cool. <laughs> Let's take a quick break and we'll be back in a minute. Okay. Um, all right, give me just a second. Take a quick drink of water. Should too. Um, okay, give me a second. Let me look at the note, notes really quickly. Okay. The family tree and the dump the digital thing is um, okay. So what kind of kind of important too in the socialization okay. thing? Those those three. Okay. Uh, I Anything else you see? <laughs> okay. So, um, <clears throat> okay. All right. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. We are back with Barb and Rich Hecke, and we are talking about grandparents of homeschoolers and uh, just fun ways for them to be involved. And I was thinking as we were talking, I was thinking during the break, um, how I love the idea of grandparents being involved through just activities like reading. I mean, how easy would it be for, you know, with the technology we have today? I mean, yeah. it's so easy and amazing, mm -hmm. even though you're not there in person, but mm -hmm. to open up a book and flip it around and show them the pictures and be able to just have them see your faces and get mm -hmm. to know you yes. without mm -hmm. having yes. to be physically present. It's the next best thing, truly. Mm -hmm. right. Exactly. And um, what, what a blessing it is that in our day and age, we have the ability to, yeah. to do that. Mm -hmm. So I, I know, you know, we've talked about so many times the whole issue of socialization and how that's the big thing. And I know that with a lot of grandparents, because they don't quite understand homeschooling. Mm -hmm. And that is mm -hmm. the number one reason why grandparents yeah. are not supportive of homeschooling because they simply exactly. don't understand it. That is one of the main reasons why we're making this documentary Schoolhouse Rocked mm. because yeah. we really want to open up people's eyes to this is what homeschooling looks like. This is why yeah. it's beneficial. These are the mm -hmm. great blessings of homeschooling. And so talk right. about if you were talking to a grandparent, just mm -hmm. let's, let's, role play for a minute and say, you mm. come face to face with another set of grandparents mm. who are saying to you, my child wants to homeschool my grandkids and I'm really not comfortable with it because I think mm. they're going to be unsocialized. Mm -hmm. mm. How do you answer that question? Um, I answer it with questions. I, I ask them first, who is it that does the socializing in whatever environment they're in, whether it's the home, a public school or whatever. And then what is the content of that socialization? Mm -hmm. So they need to think about what socialization in a different environment really is. Is that what they really want? Does it glorify Jesus Christ? They, they need to hone down to what they think socialization is. And basically in a, in a traditional school, it's going to be um, the teachers there and their peers and probably about 
ten percent teachers and ninety percent peers. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But well, the teacher is is has a lot of influence too because Jesus said that you know you will the goal of education is to become like your teacher. Right. And so, do we want the grandkids to become like their parents, or do we want them to become like? some random teacher who was assigned to them in a classroom and students who just happened to sit next to them, you know, in the, in a, at a desk, mm-hmm. um, just to get them to think through that because they really don't think through it. Yeah. And an- another thing um, with socialization, um, most children that I've seen that have been homeschooled very readily can communicate with adults and have a conversation with them. Right. And, but yeah. think about it a minute, how natural is it to be in a class of 30 children, all the same age, not even a variance in the ages. They're just right. all with the same age. And then you look at society, where is that replicated in society? It's not, it's mm-hmm. just that one particular situation. Right. And we see it as being um, you know, people like to throw around the, 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 the word diversity. Well, it's a lot more diverse to be in a homeschool setting True. where you're interacting with all sorts of different ages mm-hmm. and you're interacting with parents. And a lot of times um, as homeschoolers, we'll, we'll uh, go on field trips with our children. They get to interact with adults. They get to learn about maybe another occupation and what they do. And so they're being exposed to a whole lot more of uh, life than in a closed classroom. Mm-hmm. And there are going to be kids that are shy and withdrawn in the homeschooled environment and in the public school right. environment. And <laughs> yeah. the opposite is true as well. It's just people are different. And mm-hmm. um, one of the things I did, like he mentioned, I like to research. <laughs> okay. So when I was first looking into homeschooling, I had this list of, I don't know, probably 30 questions I asked. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I asked the one friend we knew who was homeschooling for names of other homeschoolers. So I called mm-hmm. them all and I oh, wow. you know, went through <laughs> the list of all my questions and then I asked them for names of people they knew. And so like, I called all of these people. Yeah. And after about the first three people, I crossed the socialization questions off my list. I mean, right. it wasn't even an issue. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not an issue at all. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've learned that and it's kind of funny. I, I always kind of chuckle inside when people actually bring that up. And you I, know. Know, I, I always just want to say, you know, well, look at most kids, not all, but look at most kids coming out of the public school and tell me which one of those characteristics you would like my children to emulate. Mm. I know. know, Not many of them. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, and you know, not that every public school child is, you know, a a terrible example, but, um, but many of them are, Uh, Mm -hmm. we know a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, and not that every homeschool kid is perfect. They're not, we know a lot of them too, (laughs) but overall, you know, I, I certainly would want our kids to be, um, to have Christ-like character and to spend their time with other kids whose yeah. parents have the same goals in mind yeah. that we do and who right. are heading down the same, same path yeah. as us. So um, I, that's important. So uh, let's talk about family tree. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. A um, family tree is a really fun thing that grandparents can do with their grandkids, uh, whether they're locally or long distance, because they've got some of the personal memories too that go back further than the parents. Um, but the one thing that we tell grandparents to do is to do a twist on the family tree. So don't just record the names and the dates. You you need that to have your framework, but look at character. Mm -hmm. Talk about what Mm -hmm. that person was like. Were they a Christian? Were they not? Um, What was their character like? And how did that impact their life and what happened to them? Um, I mean, you you can get into stuff, all kinds of discussions um, on on what just the impact of, of good character and bad character. And that also leads into the goal that we want to get into lots of discussions with, with 
grandparents and grandchildren is is salvation because yeah. that's the key difference in a family tree people don't think about salvation mm -hmm. they're just who begat who you know right. um but you know what happened to these people based on their faith or lack thereof and then uh, that weaves right into a gospel message and a convert deep conversation with the grandkids about, you know, where they stand and in, in, in their salvation and their faith, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I, I love the idea of mm -hmm. family trees and, and going back to um, figuring out where we came from, you know, yeah. why, why are, because yeah. all of the grandparents have played a role in some way mm -hmm. um, that has led their grandchildren to be where they are in life. And, right. Uh, right. So, well, we, unfortunately, we are out of time mm -hmm. for the podcast. I would love to continue going on and on, um, <laughs> but I am so grateful for you. I'm grateful for your ministry to grandparents and to parents alike. Where can people find out more about you? If they go to our website, it's just grandparentsofhomeschoolers.org. Okay. And if they can click on join, it's free. Uh, they just fill in the information and then they will get resources and things that we send out. We're going to be launching some things in the first quarter, new resources for grandparents, and they'll get messages as to how they can get a hold of these and free resources. So, okay. Yeah. Fantastic. And <laughs> Am I correct that you you actually speak at some conventions? Yeah, across yes, the country, right? Yeah, uh, and internationally know? as well. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, yeah. do you know yet where you're going to be, or are you not we, exactly we, sure? We don't exactly. have this um, everything tied down this okay. thing yet, but um, okay. if they're in an area um, where there's a homeschool convention um, mm -hmm. or an online convention, they can look for us and just just Google us. Okay, um, you yeah, keep that and, on your website. Do you have a list of where you're going to be? Um, we we will it's um okay. we need to update it it's in the works yeah, okay that's yeah, in the works so <laughs> okay well we will so, put yeah we'll put a link to your so, website in there okay uh, grandparents yeah. of homeschoolers.org yep. and mm -hmm. uh, thank you both for yeah. your ministry mm -hmm. thank you for the heart that you have for homeschool mm -hmm. families and um, just for what the lord is doing through you you are a great <laughs> blessing and it has been it's been fun having you on the podcast so thank yeah, you so thank much you. Thank, thank you thank you for what you're doing it's great Thank you so much. All right, you guys, okay. thank you for listening. We will right. see you back here again next week. Okay. Have a great right. day. Good. Okay, Bye. you too. Bye. <laughs>